Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we're finally going to get around to uh, doing a review of a tank again because most of the time I've been preoccupied with doing the videos on the 1k subscriber replay contest lately but today finally we're back to reviewing tanks and this here is the A44 tier 7 Soviet medium tank. Now I'm on my way down the Soviet medium tank line because I really want to get for Object 140. Now, I said that in my last video on the A43 as well, but I'm just going to quickly highlight this again. And that is that if you've got the choice between going down this tank line or the upper tank line, I would almost in any situation prefer the upper tank line. First of all, because vehicles are better. The possible exception of a tier 6 tank, but I must have it, I really like this tank. And I'm loving this tank, and I think I'm going to love this tank here too. And so, across the board really, except for tier 6 maybe, the tanks of the upper line are better. And the second reason is, that after tier 8, if you've gone the upper line and you've got the object 416, you can basically get any of the free Soviet tier 10 medium tanks from there. But if you went to the T-44, you can only choose between the T-62A and the Object 140, so that gives you less choice. So that's why I would always recommend going the upper line. And in my opinion, the A-44 probably is the best tier 7 medium tank. I mean, seriously, the T-43 really is not that good. Cheery isn't very good either. Yeah, I guess the T-20 is alright. Comet's supposed to be quite good. Then, with the Germans, the Panther is actually quite underwhelming. VK is not very good either. The French don't even get a tier 7 medium tank. And yeah, okay, the Chinese, I've heard quite a few good things about the T-34-1. But really, all in all, uh, in my opinion, the A-44 is probably the best of the bunch. Just because it, it basically, it gets an amazing gun. It's very fast and it's very well armoured. Now, if we look at it straight away, we can see one quite peculiar thing, which is that the turret is rear-mounted. This is one of the few medium tanks with a rear-mounted turret in-game at the moment. And that actually makes playing this tank quite interesting and actually quite strange at the beginning. But you get used to it quite quickly and actually I really like the fact that this tank's got a rear mount the turret because it brings some disadvantages but also some advantages. Yeah, so when you first get your A44 you already have a 76mm gun, this gun here, and the V5 engine researched. Now, the bad news is that this gun really is not up to scratch. And yeah, you know, a tier 5 gun and a tier 7 medium tank, it really does not get the job done. This gun is already underwhelming on the A43, and it really underperforms on this tier 7 A44. So, uh, if you are lucky, you will already have a top gun, the 107mm Z6, researched from playing the T-150 or the KV-2. So, uh, you're really lucky if you research the gun on either of these two tanks. But, then again, there's a bit of bad news on that as well, because you can't mount the gun straight away. You first of all need to research the tracks. So, once you've researched the tracks, upgrade to the 107mm gun. This gun is absolutely amazing. It just totally changes the way the tank plays and really I would recommend that you just get this gun and the tracks with free experience because if you haven't got this gun the tank just really underperforms and then last of all you want to really get the radio and the turret uh, well if you've gone down other Soviet tank lines you've already got the radio but the turret is new and uh, that is if this is a really good turret it gives you improved armor and the view range so Let's get dug into the stats of this tank. It's got 1,100 hit points. That's a very good amount of health. So I think that's one of the highest hit point pools of tier 7 medium tanks. So you can definitely usually be able to take, in a tier 7 match, you'll be able to take about a 5 hits or maybe 4. So uh, that is very good. You've also got quite a high weight of almost 40 tons with my loadout. Now, that means that you can actually do some very good ramming. You should avoid ramming heavy tanks, but you can definitely ram medium and light tanks. You usually have a weight advantage. Now, driving those 40 tons is a 600 horsepower engine. That is actually quite powerful, and it allows you to get a speed of 59 kph. The power to weight ratio is 15.36. Now, that's not amazing, but it's alright, and uh, really, I haven't got any issues with the mobility of this tank. I mean, sometimes it's a bit slow to accelerate, and uphill, the speed can kind of drop a bit, but 
really, uh, all in all, this tank is really quick and speedy and very manoeuvrable as well with 44 degrees of traverse speed and 38 degrees of turret traverse. So that means that this tank definitely has got medium tank speed characteristics and that definitely allows you to quickly adapt to changes on the battlefield, uh, basically have an aggressive playstyle, uh, kind of a bit like a knife fighter. Now, next we'll talk about the armour and for the armour that's quickly go to the Watt Tank Viewer because it's actually quite complex. So here's the A44's collision model and uh, we can see that the armour actually is quite thick. At the upper plate, well in the garage it tells you that it's 150mm but that's not quite true because 150mm uh, millimeter armour zones are only here and right here where the upper glacius meets the lower plate. In between, we've got, I'd say that's about 75 millimeters of armor. Now that's sloped very well, but still it can be penetrated sometimes. And the lower plate is 75 as well. So if you're going for the A44 frontally and you want to hit the hull, usually you should go for the lower plate because that's less angled than the upper plate. And if you can't go for the lower plate, then go for the center part of the upper plate where the armor is quite a bit lower than uh, <laughs> on these 150 millimeter armor zones. But these are actually the places where the tank gets hit the most often. So uh, that's very, very good that you've got that much armor and really anything will bounce from those armor zones. And even with the 75 millimeter armor zone, it's angled really, really well, so it can bounce lots of shots too. Now, right on top of the tank here, let's see, that must be yeah, it's a 30 millimeter armor zone, and you can kind of still hit it from the front. So if you're using a gun with a caliber that's higher than 90 millimeters, you'll be able to overmatch this armor, this this armor plate here. Uh, so that means that it doesn't matter what angle your shot hit at what angle your shot hits it, it will always penetrate. So that's useful to know if you're engaging for A44. On the sides, well, it seems like the sides have got 60 millimeters of armor. Now they're guarded quite well by the tracks, at least the lower parts of the side are. But um, up here, really, yeah, it'll just penetrate most of the time. But 60 millimeters means that you can actually pull off some really good side scraping maneuvers in this vehicle. You can angle your armor about like this. It will really increase your chance of bouncing. And if you side scrape around a corner like this, point your gun at your enemy like this, uh, with your tracks, you know, Russian tracks are infamous for just absorbing shots. Uh, if you just angle your tank around a corner like this, point your gun at the enemies, you'll be able to deflect quite a few uh, enemy shells. Now, on the rear, we can see that the tank also get. I think that must be, yeah, it's 60mm as well, most of the time. Uh, we've got quite a thick armor zone here, though. That must be, is it 90mm? Yeah, so don't go shooting at this part, but really, rear and sides, if you get them flush, you'll penetrate most of the time. Then the turret is a different story though, because in the garage it says the turret is only 75mm I believe, but the turret is a bit more complex than that. First of all we've got this 90mm piece of spaced armour up front, so that is very sturdy, but behind it there's an armour hole, so 90mm is good, but it's not going to bounce shots very reliably. Then the rest of the armour on the turret seems to be 90mm, uh, and besides the gun mantlet, and front, sides, and rear. So that's kind of quite good news having 90mm of rear turret armor, but that for front, yeah, I mean, you know, the turret's not bad, but usually you will be able to penetrate the turret more easily than the hull, really. Uh, that's quite unusual, but I mean, still the turret can be quite sturdy. Now, one major weakness of the turret is this massive cupola up here, but this cupola also gets 120mm armor zones, so if you hit it on these rings here, it can be really difficult to penetrate. So try to avoid hitting the rings and go for the upper part of the cupola. But the cupola can uh, really kind of make it difficult to play this tank. Which, for example, if you're trying to uh, poke your gun over a pile of rubble or something like that, or if you're cresting a ridge, then the enemies will be able to see your cupola way before you can aim your gun at them, and uh, that's one major problem. But all in all, the A44 tier for tier is probably one of the best armoured medium tanks in the game, 
and uh, you know it will be able to deflect lots of shots but other tier 7 medium tanks wouldn't be able to deflect so you can actually rely on your armor especially when engaging lower tier vehicles so yeah that was for armor that's go back to the garage to have a look at the rest of the stats so um yeah there's been a bit of a problem uh, and that is that uh, i recorded this uh, actually before and um, what happened is after after I finished recording, I sold my A44, and then I no uh, then I realized that once again my recording program had totally messed up, and I couldn't open the, the video file anymore. So um, that's why I'll just have to do this whole thing again, but this time without the tank. So um, we didn't really have that many stats left anymore. All we have to really talk about is the gun and view range and signal range. So I'm just going to go to the tech tree and um, yeah, highlight the A44's gun once again for you guys. Now this gun here is 107mm uh, and for me this is one of the real sweet spots of a tank but it's also one of the major drawbacks. So yeah let's analyse it in depth. Now I think I already pointed this out but it is the same gun that you can unlock on the T150 and the KV2 and um, I would really recommend you to unlock them at one of those two tanks because it is a real hard grind to get. So yeah, what makes this 107mm so special? Well, first of all, it's got a rate of fire of 5.71, which is actually quite bad on a medium tank. I mean, it could be worse, like for example on the T-34-3, the Chinese tier 8 medium premium, but it definitely is at the lower end of medium tank rate of fire. It's got only 167mm of pen. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but actually if you compare this to other medium tanks at tier 7, like for example the Comet or the Chiri, this actually compares fairly well. It actually is, you know, average. It's not outstanding, but it is average. Obviously, the tanks like the Panther have got this penetration beaten, but still, 167mm is not bad at all, if you know where to aim. The average damage is 300 hit points. That's really massive. This is actually the highest alpha damage of any of the tier 7 medium tanks and that means that you can in many situations actually trade shots with heavy tanks like the Tiger 1 or the AMX M4 and come out on top. You can even trade shots with an AMX 5100 at tier 8 and come out on top if you put a shot into him for each shot he puts into you. Although because he's gotten a lot higher hit point pool probably he'll still win. But all in all your alpha damage is really really competitive. This is really really good average damage. Uh, however, one major issue is that the RNG range is really big. It really feels like it can roll down to up to uh, it can roll down to only 200 hit points per shot. I'm not sure about that. I can't confirm that. But I've had rolls of say 225 and stuff like that. So it really it is quite trollish. Speaking of trollish stats, we've also got a 0.45 accuracy, which really is very very bad. 0.45 is just, uh, that is really horrible. I mean, you really have to use this tank at close range because coupled with a 3.4 second aiming time, this tank is just made for brawling. You cannot afford to take shots at long range because just the, you have to wait for ages for your sights to settle and then even if you do that your shot will probably still miss so it's just not worthwhile and um, yeah it's just basically a typical Russian gun but in my opinion this is still all in all a really nice cannon because because you trade bad accuracy and aiming time for great alpha damage and decent rate of fire in relation to that alpha damage so yeah in my opinion that sounds like quite a good deal and that's really what makes the A44 special just the fact that its alpha damage is that high and many people actually underestimate the A44 now it's kind of a bit like an, in a way that playing the A44 is a bit like playing an ELC AMX it's basically like a shotgun on tracks although the ELC AMX is a lot faster and a lot more lightly armoured and has also got a higher penetrating gun for its tier it's also got a very very long aim time and what you kind of have to do in the ELC AMX you kind of have to drive by your enemy 
and shoot them while you're driving by and then kind of draw back to cover more or less. So that's a really good tactic in the A44 as well. Now I'm not going to look at view range and signal range now because I haven't got the tank in my garage anymore. I don't want really to flash it up. It's not really that important. It's just basically fairly average on the tank both of it. So let's just move on to equipment and equipment is actually really important on the A44. Now the A44 cannot mount a vertical stabilizer, so forget about that straight away. You definitely need to have an enhanced gun lane drive and a tank gun armor. Those two items are absolutely necessary. For the third piece of equipment, it's actually quite a throw up between, in my opinion, a uh, cyclone filter, wet ammo rack and improved vents. Now the argument for improved vents obviously is that because of the quite trollish nature of a gun, improved vents would really give you a very big benefit and basically this is just one of the medium tanks in which improved vents would work the best on. But you've also got a really, really weak ammo rack. Usually your ammo rack gets damaged at least once a game, it's just one of these tanks, kind of like the leopard one as well. So wet ammo rack is quite good too. but cyclone filter would be useful as well because you've got a front mounted engine and that just means that you get set on fire and your engine gets taken out so often that it just really gets on your nerves and can really uh, yeah, really either cost your repair pack early on in the game or just make you render you useless for quite a few seconds and get you killed in many situations. In my opinion the best choice out of a free would be cyclone filter because in my experience my engine just got knocked out so so often I got set on fire so often that I, that was probably the worst thing about this tank while I was driving it so really cyclone filter is the way to go in my opinion but you can choose wet ammo rack or improved vents uh, whatever you want really there's a case to be made for each one of them and really what I would recommend is that you just get into the tank play a few battles and then just decide what drawback gets to you the most for bad aiming time and for bad accuracy in that case go for vents the fact that the engine gets taken out so often then go for a cyclone filter or that your ammo rack gets blown or damaged quite frequently in that case go with wet ammo rack um, of course closely coupled to the equipment are also crew skills it is absolutely essential to have repairs on your entire crew just because in the A44 you uh, tend to side scrape quite a bit so having repairs just really gives you the edge when you side scrape and just really helps getting the tracks up really quickly but really the moment that reaches 100% I would probably swap it for brothers in arms because having brothers in arms on the A44 is just really amazing especially if you went for vents in your equipment setup then obviously repairs again of the entire crew I, in my opinion, you don't really need six cents in the command on this tank. I mean, of course, it's nice to have, but on the A44, really, because you should be using it at that close range, I mean, you know, if you're five meters away from your enemy, it's quite obvious that they'll have spotted you. It's not rocket science, you know. So, really, you shouldn't be prioritizing six cents as much as in other tanks. So, in my opinion, having a 100% repair crew is more important than having six cents on your commander on this tank. However, what I would definitely go for is safe storage on your loader, just because the ammo rack gets blown very often, as, uh, as well as preventative maintenance on your driver just for the same reason just concerning the engine however also smooth ride would be really nice on the driver here and controlled impact would be amazing too because the A44 is an amazing ramming machine as you'll hopefully see in the gameplay that I'll be showing you in a minute so um Really, it's a real throw up for the driver. Which of these three you want to get? In my opinion, probably preventative maintenance would be the best to get first because it's a perk, and uh, training perks later on in your skill setup is just real pain because it takes so long. So just go for it straight away. However, if you want to transfer your crew to uh, later on the tier 10 Russian medium tanks, don't go with preventative maintenance because you won't need it after the tier 8 object 416 anymore. So, uh, yeah, if you want to keep your crew on the A44 with 416, then definitely go with preventative maintenance because it will really help. And after that, probably controlled impact and then smooth ride. For your gunner, it's quite straightforward, really. Definitely go for snapshot 
it's going to give you a real big benefit and then we've already discussed the commander so yeah that was more or less it we've also kind of discussed tactics already more or less so let's just head out to the battlefield and see how this buddy here performs i'm really sorry that i kind of messed up with the recording but you know i hope i could just still get the content across in a decent way so see you in a second so here we go this is our first game on cliff and we can see that this is a very very nice matchup indeed I'm in the A44 obviously right at the top of the team list which is quite interesting because it means that like the enemy team have got if you can look here they've got two heavy tanks and we haven't got any but therefore we've got two A44s which gives our team a bit more flexibility now um, really they had two choice in this map for the A44 because it hasn't got very good gun depression you could argue that you could go down to the one and two line but I just don't think that I'll have that many tactical opportunities down there so I decide to head up here And because I haven't got good gun depression, now this is actually something that I forgot to mention in the garage, this tank hasn't got good gun depression at all, you can see this kind of huge bump here on top of the hole that just really makes it difficult to point the gun downwards. I mean it's not as bad as some people expect it to be, it's 5 degrees, if you think that the, uh, the IS-4 for example only gets 6 degrees of gun depression so it's not that bad really it could be a lot worse I, I'm looking at the Chinese here when I say that but still it also could be a very very much better so um, anyway that's the reason why I'm not heading to the center of the map just because uh, you kind of need gun depression to operate there as well on the 5 and 6 lines so I just headed out to this part here and straight away we encounter a Tiger 1 who hits our tracks while we take a massive chunk of his health off and a second one right after that uh, he bounced one and then his third shot penetrated us so that is quite nice that just shows the good armor of the A44 because the Tiger 1 has got a very very high penetrating gun but even he bounced and right there you can see how great Alpha damage whittling down that tank's health. You can see we've got no problems penning his frontal armor. Of course, there's a VK helping us, but you know, still, it's quite a good performance here. So now the Tiger One's on very, very low health at this point, but our VK goes. And I mean, you know, to be fair here, I must say that I was kind of using him as a meat shield against these guys. So, uh, sorry, bro, but um, you know, his death is better for our team than my death if that makes sense. So trying to get a hit of this T29, I think I took his track off there, not quite sure. But you can see that when I try to go for the upper hull of a T29, I start having problems. And right now I'm on quite low health, so I have to be a bit cautious. I tried to lead my shot there with the Cromwell stop, that actually was quite inflexible gameplay by me there, could have done better. But you can see that on the one and uh, on the five and six lines, our allies are pushing. Uh, on the two line, it looks like there's quite a kind of a choke point situation, not much going on. But all in all, it looks like our team's winning because we've got control of most of the map at this point. But. Um, this is quite a campy situation. It doesn't look like anybody here wants to make a push. I'm on very, very low health. The Yak Panther's using the 88 mm gun, as we can see. He's probably want to play. Probably wants to play like a sniper or very defensive and static kind of game mode. And I mean, seriously, a T34 against a T29 isn't a very fair match. So none of us really wants to push here. And really, it should be the Yak Panther who takes the first hit in this scenario because he's got the most health. He's got chance of bouncing one shot, maybe. Uh, the T-34 will definitely go down. I will definitely die. So really, it has to be the Yak Panther. But I just realized that nothing is going to happen here. So I just decided to turn around and defend the center of the map against these two very aggressive tier 6 meds, trying to make a push towards our base. So I really hope that, that Yak Panther and the T-34 can make a stand against the T-29, although usually a Yak Panther against a T-29 one-on-one won't work out too well. Really what they should do probably is the Yak Panther should take a hit 
and then the T-34 should try to go around. So the Comet misses his first shot, then very stupidly drives on top of the rock. So that allows me to get the first great shot into him, and then the Yak Panzer 4 finishes him off. T-34-85 hits by track, gets absorbed. Russian tracks take that. And things aren't looking too good anymore now. The T-29 is coming round, so I really have to take out this T-34-85, otherwise I get cut in, uh, get caught in between the two of them, which really is not very nice. So, the T-34-85 takes out my track. I repair because I just really want to take this guy out now, before the T-29 comes round. Take unnecessary damage there. Wasn't very good play there, really. And now, instead of engaging that T-29, I decide to make a rush for the enemy base. If you look at the lineup, the enemies have got the T29 and the T25-2 and three SPGs and the, T, uh, and the Panzer 38NA. Well, we've only got me and the Yak Panzer 4 and three SPGs. So the enemies have got a lot stronger lineup. Now, uh, I think the T29 should be thinking that I'm running for his base. And then I reconsider and decide, because he's on very low health, to go for him. And I get a very lucky snapshot there, this Coppola, getting my second kill, and this brings me back into the game. At this point, actually, we could win this, but we have to play it very carefully, because that T25-2 is nearly on full health still. And our Yak Panzer 4, let's see how much hit points he's got. Okay, he's on full health, so it's actually looking quite good at this point. And the RT is doing a, some really good work here. Thumbs up to the RT, well done, they take down the T25-2 so now it's basically all of us against three pieces of artillery and a Panzer 38 NA so that should not be much of a challenge but strangely our artillery piece gets taken out I think yeah that was the Gorilla so um, yeah that's not too nice because now we're missing our tier 7 artillery but we still should be able to handle it still I have to be really careful because probably the enemy RT will be expecting me to pop out uh, pop up where I am going to so they'll probably be pre-aimed and just waiting to waff an HE shell at me they just have to sploosh me and I'm going to be dead so I have to really watch out here I can one hit this guy but I miss that's why you shouldn't rush your shots in this kind of situation but I guess I just kind of wanted to take him out before he could take me out in turn that didn't work out <laughs> but second time I hit now I'm going to go for M41. He takes a shot, but there's still a Crusader SP. He could still take me out. And those are two quite dangerous artillery pieces. So I have to be very careful here. Looks like the M41 is coming for me. Okay, come here, mister. Looks like he wants to cliff dive me. Okay, okay, that's cool. <laughs> Not so clever now, are you, Mr. M41? But, you know, credit where credit's due, that guy was quite brave. <laughs> if that's, you know, maybe, maybe that's all that can be said for him, but, you know, still. Uh, at least he tried to fight. So I've got respect for that. So, oh, there's the Panzer 38 NA. So I'm going to prioritise him, I think, now. Or am I going to go for the Archie? Yeah, it looks like I choose the artillery. Okay. Swooping into base. Can I catch him? I'm going wide here. I don't want to go for a capture circle. Come on. This is a really bad aiming time of this gun. I, I can't believe this. I seriously just bounced off the front of a Crusader SP. I can't believe it. So now I'm entering the cap circle. It's just me and the SP left. I have to be kind of careful, I don't want him to waff an HE shell from behind the rock at me. That shot misses, and our Yak Panzer 4 takes him out. So that leaves me with 4 kills, pulling the score back to 15 to 11. This game got quite close uh, in the late middle game. So, uh, yeah, we kind of pulled it back, taking out that T29 and pushing the enemy base, putting pressure up. Uh, well played to our artilleries. They did a really good job supporting me in the Jagdpanzer 4. And um, all in all, that turned out to be quite a nice round. So, once again, we got some kind of ridiculous amount of credits on that game. 169,000. No idea where that came from. Some kind of special, definitely. Can't imagine that we got that much just by pure damage dealing. 
and also 4,244 experience. That, however, was only with a times two and premium account, so nothing strange going on there. First class mastery badge, which is quite nice, and a steel ball medal, which actually came quite surprising, but uh, kind of showcases the armor on this medium tank. In the team school window, uh, we can see that I came first on the entire team, by far actually, and also dealt the most damage, but that GW Panther did very well too, and got the most kills, 4 frags in total. We fired 16 shots, of which 12 hit and 11 pen, which is actually quite nice considering the bad accuracy values of this tank. 2000 damage is very nice as well at tier 7 for a medium tank, received 11 hits, of which 8 penned, 3 didn't, and 1 did splash damage. So we received a total of 2,125 HP, which is actually exactly the same as our damage we dealt, more or less. We also spotted 4 enemies, damaged 7 and destroyed 4, and picked up 1,656 spotting damage. We can see that actually the ammo is not all too expensive in this tank, although the, uh, the damage is quite high, each round only costs uh, between two and three hundred credits. So that means that you can actually run quite a profit on this vehicle because you do that much damage, you get lots of credits, but you don't have to spend too much money on your ammo. So that's quite nice. Yeah, and uh, that was the first game, but I've got a second one lined up for you guys as well, in which I did even better. So that's head in and see how it turns out. So here's the last game for today on steps. It's again a tier seven match, and I'm heading out for the encounter base in this match. We can see that the teams have actually, or this, our team at least, has split up quite well. But there are some very aggressive scouts here. I'm letting myself get a bit distracted by that T-34 there. Let's see if I can get a hit into him. No, I can't. Not aimed enough. So I just decide, screw that. I'm not going to get any damage here. I'm just going to expose myself to taking damage. Just going to get to the encounter base and get stuck in. That's the plan at the moment. You can see the quite decent manoeuvrability of A44. Power to weight ratio is not amazing, but the speed and manoeuvrability is alright. Just going to quickly speed it up a bit till we get to position. And yeah, that shot would never hit, would it? <laughs> So right now, uh, usually in any other medium tank, I would try to crest this ridge, but because of a really bad gun depression in this vehicle, I'm just not going to bother. Instead, I'm going to try to kind of, in a way, kind of side scrape around this sand dune here. Well, it's not really a dune, kind of an undulation. We can see that our teammates in the west are being pushed quite hard by the enemies. And oh, there's an M7 and a PZSFL5. Now he fired, that means he has to reload for like literally ages, except for if he's using the stock gun. So right there we put a very meaty shot through his upper glaciers, or actually through his, through his gun mount, I think that was. Now luckily for us that Yak Panther is naming at us so we can get a clutch shot into that Panzer SFL and take him out. M7 gets a hit into us. I think he only damaged our track. Yak Panther bounces. I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, with the reticle here. And things are not looking good at all for our team. Scores five to nine. We're down four tanks. Basically, we're reduced to three tier sevens. Not looking good at all. So let's see if we can come back from this. We've still got nearly full health. But Yak Panther, not sure what he's doing there, probably trying to flank us. I'm trying to engage him. I, this, I'm really sorry about this, the, the reticle's just really screwed. But anyway, I pick up the kill on the Yak Panther, that's my second frag. So now I'm going to go after this M7 here. Just go straight at him, over the ridge. The shot, and I actually wanted to go for Ram, but he dodges me. So I'm just going to follow him around and oh seriously <laughs> oh no <laughs> okay that was quite stupid of me there so I ram him and I b 
bounce. Oh god, this is, this is actually that was quite embarrassing. So really, that guy should have been long dead there. And uh, kind of a bit of a spoiler alert here. If that guy, if I had managed to kill that guy, this game would have been a Radley Walters medal. But uh, yeah. So there's a PZSFL4C with a high roll. We should be able to take him out. Of course, we don't get a high roll, but. That's what ramming's there for. And that's just what I'm saying, especially against lower tier tanks. The A44 is an excellent ramming machine. So, we've in, within a few minutes, we've been able to even out the score quite a bit. It's 10 to 11 now. And we're up 1 tier 7 tanks. So, yeah, things are looking a lot more equal now. So, really what I was thinking of doing was looping around all the way to the west. But then I realised, uh, wait a minute... Our enemies have all pushed for north. So really, I, I was just um, thinking of heading over there in a straight line. But then I spot this Churchill Mark 7 here. I tried to take a snapshot of VK, but it's not going to happen. So I decide just to focus on the Churchill. Now you can see me loading APCR ammunition here to compensate for my bad pen because the Churchill 7 can be quite difficult to penetrate frontally. Uh, however, he's too stupid to turn his frontal armor to me, so... Uh, not having many problems, so really I'm just wasting my APCR armor here, but you know, you can't know that kind of stuff in advance. So I pick up my fourth kill on the Churchill 7, but there's still three enemy tanks to go. So there's the KV-1S, I'm still using APCR ammunition. Obviously punch a shot through the frontal armor of that tank, and hopefully we'll be able to reload before he will. Oh, he's aiming at us! But we put a clutch APCR round into him, finishing him off, and securing kill number 5. So now I'm going after this VK. I'm not sure why I'm still using APCR ammunition, but I probably I just forgot to switch. So I'm really sorry for this rectical kind of, you know, bug or whatever it is. But anyway, 6 kills, top gun secured. So now there's only this M5 Stewart left to go, and... Yeah, another APCR round, coupled with a ram, takes care of that guy, and the score's 15-12, to 12, so we came back from that game really well, and um, really, I think it's fair to say that we kind of carried our team to victory there, considering that um, the tank who got the second most kills was two kills, and we got seven. So, real shame that we don't those shots on the M7, because otherwise we would have gotten the Radley Walters here, but, you know, still I'm not going to complain about a seven kill round, and, um, yeah, I hope this game just showed two things. First of all, that the armor of the A44 is really up to scratch, and secondly, that you can really use it as a very, very good ramming machine. So, um, yeah, that's look at the post-game stats to see how well we performed exactly. So, once again, we got a ridiculous amount of credits, 104,796, uh, but this time I actually think that that might be without a special, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we got 4,380 experience as well. We finally picked up our Ace, Ace Tanker Mastery Badge. I was so glad to get this finally, because I thought that I'd never get it in this tank. It was really difficult to get, but uh, yeah, I was just really glad to get it. Also, High Calibre, Top Gun, and Steel Wall once again. The team score shows that we got the most experience by far on the entire team, 1,460. So, if you want to get an Ace Tanker on the A4, you'll probably have to perform in the 1400 range which is quite high actually so that just shows you how well people are doing we dealt out 3671 damage seven kills real shame with that radley walters medal there on the enemy team nobody really excelled that much t20 did quite all right though and yeah in the detailed report we can see that we fired 17 shots which 14 connected 13 penned Dealing 3,671 damage, received 13 hits, 7 penetrated, 6 didn't. That's quite a good ratio there. Uh, our armor blocked 1,000 hit points worth of damage. We spotted 3 enemies, damaged 8, destroyed 7, and picked up 266 assistance damage. And once again, we can see the quite low ammo resupply cost so yeah that was kind of it for this a44 review i hope i could really showcase this tank for you and you learn some uh, interesting stuff about it and in my opinion the a44 just really is the best tier 7 medium tank without question it is just so so good to play in many situations the aiming time and accuracy can be quite frustrating but the fact that it's got a re-mounted turret makes this tank really interesting the high alpha 
high maneuverability and reliable armor really make this a very very well-rounded tank and although it sometimes feels a bit kind of um, yeah, it feels a bit awkward with the aiming time. It still performs really, really well, as you can see with how high an experience score we needed to get our ace tank about. So, um, really, I can only recommend the A44. I would really recommend you to go the upper line in the Soviet TDs, not the T44 line, but the Object 416 line. It's just way better. I really enjoy this vehicle, and uh, definitely go check it out if you like your brawling medium tanks. Yeah, so thanks for watching as usual. Consider giving this video a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel if you haven't done that yet. And I hope I see you out there on the battlefield or maybe even in one of my next videos. Um, yeah, bye-bye.